Hey everybody, I'm Mama Baird and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have another food bank haul for you. This is our local food bank. I am located in Missoula, Montana, and they have just implicated a one week limit. So you're allowed to go once a week. I am a family of six, so we get a card that is the green card. I'll put a picture of it here and it kind of shows you the limits that my family has for once a week for pantry items. Got a new cutie game, huh? Cutie patootie. So those are the pantry limits for the different things that they have portioned ready to go. Then there also are limits at the particular station. So like the produce station, you're allowed one bag full for my size of family. And then you have the different freezers. You're allowed one to two items per each freezer or each door. They have it all labeled on what each one is for. So I went on the right day, that's for sure, because there are lots of goodies there and I was able to grab more than I usually do, which is splendid and I am going to be busy this weekend, that is for sure. Before we get into the haul though, if you're new here, I'm Carolina. I do a lot of food bank hauls and pantry cooking on my channel. I would love for you to like this video and press that subscribe button and come join me and my YouTube family. We have a lot of fun around here and I know you are just the type of person we've been looking for to join the fun. So let's get into this haul and let's see what I got. So I'm gonna start with the frozen items. They had a bunch of frozen hot deli foods that used to be hot. And this is mashed potatoes that were once on a hot bar and then frozen. I grabbed that because I had just made some shepherd's pie last night for dinner and I had extra filling that I just froze, but I didn't have any mashed potatoes to go on it or else I would have pre-assembled it. So now I have some mashed potatoes that I can thaw and assemble that and then have another shepherd's pie for backup in my freezer. So that was pretty exciting to utilize that. And then they had like a chicken turkey cooler and I grabbed one whole chicken. This is a 5.64 pound. So this is nice to always have a whole chicken for any kind of shredding. And then you can save the bones and make your own broth as well. So I'm always happy to grab any kind of chicken that has the bones in them. Ah! Oh, for me, raspberry toast. Tell them I got, I, tell them I, all gone. Where is it? I ate it all. Where'd he go? Ah, you found it. They have a food truck and then Gideon got a cook set for his birthday. I gave it to him early because the stinkers were scrounging around and found their presents early. So, he had a little fake food to go with his food truck. Yep. And the fresh raspberries, nice, good choice. Yeah. So here, have a present early to get out of my hair continues to be in my hair and forces me to play with said present. Wah! All right, so we got the chicken. And then after the chicken, I was able to grab a thing of pulled pork that's already cooked and seasoned. So this is always nice to have on the shelf. It's really hot here today. Everything's already melting. Um, no worries though, if I just need to throw this back in the freezer, even though it's kind of thawed. Um, but yeah, that's pretty nice. You just mix it with some barbecue sauce and you have some pulled pork sandwiches. Always nice for a quick, easy dinner. And then they had a big slab of neck bones, which this is choice beef chuck neck bones, which I'm probably just, I don't I guess you could cook no, neck bones and make a meal out of it. So I'm planning on just using this to make my own beef broth, but um, it feels like there's a lot of meat on there. So I'm wondering if you could use the meat for this first. So good to know. This is $1.49 a pound, $3.23 for this slab of meat. <laughs> no one wants neck bones anymore. And then for the extra bin, they have, well, it's kind of like an extra dry good, and then they have an extra cooler bin. So it's kind of different. I'm still hoping to get you guys into my food bank one day and give you a tour of it. But they had some syrups. They had regular and sugar-free, and then they had like some coffee flavors, and then they had fruity flavors too. So this is sugar-free banana. And I don't know if maybe I can do something with, just got an ice cream maker. Maybe I can do something with this for the ice cream maker or we could just make snow cones or something with it. So that's kind of fun to get something unique, banana syrup. Um, I don't know if it has, a, oh it does. May 10th of 2023 is the best buy date, which best buy dates are still fine. You're still able to use food. After that, that's just the, recommendation on the company of when this product is the best to use before it loses some of its flavor or quality. So that's what the Best Buy label means. It doesn't mean you're gonna die. <laughs> then they also had a giant thing of, oh my gosh, chocolate syrup. Just what my family needs, a giant thing of chocolate syrup, right? Just like, ah. <laughs> holy moly. 
We recently just won an ice cream maker and what perfect to get some chocolate sauce to go on top of it. Oh my gosh, it also has a black label mocha recipe on here for chocolate espresso and steamed milk. Ooh, that sounds really good. So holy moly, we are definitely gonna be putting this chocolate sauce to good use. What a score on that. And then, and also they had little bites, party cake muffins. Uh, Conrad was shopping with me and he picked out this one. I'm not quite sure how much these are, but this is definitely one of those items that I do not buy for my kids. This is not something I would splurge on or stock up on. I splurge in other ways like buying frozen pizza or chicken nuggets or something. To me, this is just pancake mix baked and you can have this. But if it's something that's offered at the food bank that normally would have gone in the trash that my kids kind of see as a treat and they're like, oh, we get those and they didn't have to make them and they get a fun pouch so I can like throw it in our picnic basket when we go out on adventures or something, then I'm going to take it and I'll be able to stretch this out for my three kids to last for a couple of treats. So I'm super happy that they had something like this and seeing my son's excitement and seeing this available convinced me to grab it for them. So I was happy to get this and my kids are super happy to have it as well. And then in the pantry items, I got just two things of chili beans. And then for the sweet treat, we grabbed some giant monster cookies with M&Ms in it. So the kids really enjoy these. These are ginormous cookies. And then we are allowed three half gallons of milk this week. So lots of milk. I'm very happy that sometimes we only get one. So I'm very happy that we are able to get three this week. That's going to help out a lot. And then they also had a case of this organic Horizon low fat milk that is shelf stable and there's 18 of them. So there were one per family. So I grabbed one of those. And then they had a bunch of extra mini bagels probably from Costco. So I grabbed one of those. And then I totally forgot to grab the breads. <laughs> I was focusing on the dairy cooler and forgot about the breads. But they had extra hot dog and hamburger buns as per usual. So Conrad grabbed two hamburger or two hot dogs and one hamburger. And then I fed the hamburger to the chickens. Um, but we got two of these. We pulled out some beer broth, so I think I might cook those up for dinner. And um, we'll use these buns for that. And then for pasta, they had some of this organic pasta. Um, I don't know what it's called. Garzola, maybe, is the name of the, the noodle. So I grabbed two of those. And then they had a tub full of extra sandwiches, peanut butter and strawberry jelly probably left over from kid lunches that they offer if they just had a bunch of them left over. That's why sometimes the kid lunches, they ask you if you want to have double what you usually take. So I usually get three. Sometimes they're like, do you want six? Because they have so much left over, you're allowed to have extra if they need it. So sometimes people think because you're taking the kids eat free program lunches that you're taking food from other kids who would need it more than your kids because you could make them a peanut butter and jelly sandwich instead of getting a free one from the food bank. But they actually have a lot left over. Like they're planning, if people don't show up, then that food gets thrown out. So use, the programs are there for you guys to use. Don't be afraid to use your food bank and use your Kid Eat Free programs. That's what they're there for. And if you don't use them, the food's gonna get thrown out. So it said take many and I took six and we already each had one. I had one on the way home, it was really good. So I almost wish I would have grabbed even more of them because they had two big tubs of them. But we have three extra peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And then in like the cooler extra bin, we could grab either two cannolis. Guys, I'm really resisting these desserts. You could get two cannolis or they had a thing of fruits. And Conrad actually saw the thing of fruit and he's like, mama, we haven't had blueberries in a while. And even Betty Jan, as soon as she saw the blackberries, she's like, we haven't had blackberries in a while. So we grabbed this little thing of fruit. The kids would demolish this in one sitting. So I think I might try and save this and maybe transform it into like a four berry mix of some sort. Also, originally this price is $6 for half a cup of fruit for each one. I mean, I just think that's really crazy. That's probably why it ended up at the food bank. And then they had a little thing of salsa. So I grabbed some mango salsa. That looks really good. Um, I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with it yet. And then they had bunches of things of marinara sauce and cheese. And they said two marinara and two cheese per family. So that's what I grabbed. And for the first time in a long time, guys, I'm going to have to put this food out of the way and bring up my second haul that I got from my haul today. And this is all produce. So for my produce, we got quite a bit. So let me get this stuff out of the way and I'm gonna get my produce up here and then we'll go over what I got. They also had in the extra bin for dairy, each family was allowed one thing of cheese, which this is two pounds of cheese. This is amazing. 
This is like a week and a half's worth of cheese for me. So I'm super excited about that. And they had organic probiotic yogurt, which I'm wanting to make my own yogurt. One thing about me, the thing I spend the most on is yogurt. And I'm kind of picky because it has to be Greek yogurt. I don't want sugar yogurt. I want good yogurt with probiotics and stuff. And I just want to make my own. So I was so excited to see one that had the probiotic in it because with this one, this can start as a base for me to make my homemade yogurt. So look forward to that. I'm gonna be making some homemade yogurt in my Instapot, and I definitely think you guys are gonna to wanna to be there to see how it turns out. All right, enough jibber jabber, let's get this stuff put up. First things to first, I end up with 11 bags of organic red grapes. Hi. What you eating? I'm putting my bread in Show them. I'm putting my bread in sandwich. Don't talk with your mouth full. Sorry. <laughs> Don't ask me a question, mama. Did we just get that at the food bank? It's a good sandwich, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Do you like the strawberry jelly or do you like grape jelly better? Mm. Both. You like both? I don't blame you. This is a good combination. Peanut butter is pretty good. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Holy moly. Nine bags of gorgeous organic grapes. They had so many of these. They had offering case to each family plus three additional bags because they just said they do not hold and they had so many of them and they didn't want them to go bad so they were letting whoever wanted to take as many as they were allowed to so we did 11 pounds or we did 11 bags full which i don't know these are what five pounds each so holy grape of moly this is a lot of grapes and we're super excited the kids are probably going to eat a bunch of these i don't even see mold on these at all um i don't see like a date on the bag or anything wow i'm just blown away that this is food that normally would have gone in the trash but instead my family gets to utilize it and i get to get creative and come up with a bunch of ways to use up all these grapes so this was the first major score and then they also had a bunch of apples they were offering a case per family so i grabbed a whole case of these beautiful these are probably either gala or fuji Fuji apples. We can make some kind of apple dessert with this, or this could be the kid's snack for a couple of weeks. So just be like, oh, grab a apple. And then the third thing they were allowing a lot to every family member are bags of carrots. So each family got three bags of three pounds of carrots. So I am stocked on carrots, that's for sure. And then you were allowed your typical one bag of produce for my size of family. So I grabbed. I stuffed my bag of produce too, I ain't shy about it. I got one beautiful head of cabbage since we got all those carrots. We got cabbage and then I got a kohlrabi as well, I believe. Oh, maybe I didn't grab a kohlrabi, but I have a kohlrabi from last time. And then I got some of these homegrown turnips there. Three of those. Some of these squash, I thought these were kind of cool and I've never had them before. So I thought, you know what, let's grab them. Let's uh, see what they're all about. And then they had a big thing of limes. So I grabbed half a bag of limes. Not quite sure what I'm gonna do with them yet, but I love fresh lime so much. So I grabbed some of that. And then in the extra produce bin as well, they had lettuce as much as you can grab. So I grabbed two things of salad greens, leafy greens. And then they also had extra produce where you could grab an additional bag of onions. And then they had some squashes there. So I got one onion, I got two zucchinis, and one really big, beautiful yellow squash. So I'm excited to get my squashes in. And that's all I got. Whew, holy moly, that was a lot of food. This is the second week that they have put the restrictions into place. And I seem to be getting more than I was originally. So I just find that interesting. So I have quite a bit of food to put it away. Uh, I promised the kids though that we're going to go down to the river and take a little break before uh, I do anything else. So I'm going to get some of this food in the fridge where it belongs and then we're going to take a break and we're going to go down and play in the river because it's supposed to be 96. So got to get out there and get in some water. But I already have some ideas on how I can be utilizing those grapes and I would love for you to come along and see. So don't click that mouse. I'll be right back. Good morning everybody. It is the next day and I am taking our four berry mix and we're going to transfer form them into some mixed berry muffins. So I have everything set out. I'll talk you through the recipe. This is not my recipe. I get a lot of my stuff from Preppy Kitchen with John, Ch sorry, John Cannell. 
He is amazing. He's actually got a cookbook coming out. I didn't know that. You can pre-order it. It's going on my list. He has wonderful recipes though. So he's the one, he's my go-to recipe guy. And this is one of his, I haven't tried it before. And it's four raspberry muffins, but you know what? I think we can make the four berry muffins just fine. It's a good base recipe. And it's got a yummy trussel on top. So let's get in here and let's whip up a double batch. I have my big sheet pan that holds 24 muffins. And then I have my bag of clearance um, cupcake liners whenever holidays are over and all the baking stuff for that particular holiday goes on clearance. That's when we buy these up. And then we have like a bag and it has like Christmas, here's some Easter, here's some Halloween. So it's kind of fun to make uh, holiday themed treats throughout the year. You know what I'm saying? So that'll be fun to do a mixture of that. So let's get in here and let's whip up some muffins. All right, here's half a cup of all-purpose flour. This is gonna be for our streusel. And then we're gonna do four cups of flour for our base. And then half a cup of granulated sugar. You could use brown sugar if you want. I'm gonna use the white sugar though because this is for berry muffins. I think that'll go better than the brown sugar, but you never know, it might still go good. And we're gonna put a pinch of salt in with the streusel and then one teaspoon in the batter. We're doing four teaspoons of baking powder in the mix. And then we're gonna add two cups of white sugar to the muffin mix. Add it to the muffin mix, the muffin mix, the muffin mix, and a nice sugar to the muffin mix to sweeten up the batter. Alright, there's that batter. Now let's finish this streusel. We're gonna need four tablespoons of butter. Guys, I'm gonna use my carry gold butter in this. Our oven's ready. Get butter. Pre-dice it a little bit. And then we're gonna use a pastry cutter to cut this into our sugar. Guess I should have mixed my dry goods up first. Just kind of mix this up and then we'll cut it in there. I'm usually a hands-on kind of girl. This works really good, but you don't really want to melt your butter. I guess if I would have got a bigger bowl. I mean, I've seen streusel made with melted butter as well, so it, I don't think you have to be as particular with this as you do with, say, like pie dough or pastry dough. Ah, uh, looks pretty good to me. Alright, I'll put that aside. Alright, now for our wet ingredients. One one times recipe is a three quarters cup of milk. This is a one cup portion the kids get in their school lunches. So we're gonna do one cup and then I'll do half of one and then I'll have a little extra if I need more if the batter's a little thick. Here's four eggs. And then I want five tablespoons of oil per recipe. I have this, the yogurt that we just got. I'm gonna add that instead. I think that the oil would make it really moist and tender, but I try to look for alternates to that. You could also use like coconut oil instead of the vegetable oil it calls for, or you could use sour cream. I'm gonna try the yogurt instead of the oil. So I'm gonna do roughly half a cup of yogurt in that. And then six tablespoons of melted butter. This is also the Kerrygold. I figured I might as well try it in some baking. It doesn't take too much either. I don't feel like I'm using a lot of it. And then four teaspoons of vanilla. And then I'm going to zest some lemon. This isn't the best looking lemon, but you can still use it. It still has all that oil in there. Just make sure you give all your citrus a good wash. All right, so let's give this a mix. Alright, so we're going to add our wet to our dry goods. We 
We don't want to over mix this. It's all right if there are a few clumps, but you do want to make sure it's fully incorporated. So what I like to do is kind of par mix it till about right there where you still see some white. And then we're going to add our berries. Some of these, I think everything but the blueberries, I'm going to cut up some. Add blueberries in there. Just like quarter them a bit. Blackberries have got those seeds in them, but sometimes they're still good anyway. I haven't baked with blackberries before. We do have raspberries on our property. These are huge. Look at that. You could really do the thing. No, I don't do that with my kids. What are you talking about? All right, so kind of rough chop the fruit. This sounds good, like a four berry. Oh, seven o'clock. Time to wake up, husband. All right, he's working on it. I'll get these in, get him some coffee, and then we'll get him up. He else says, husband, hard to wake up. It seems like I just, I'm a one alarm kind of girl. As soon as the alarm goes off, I'm up. Like I would rather have my deep sleep for as long as possible. And because the alarms wake me up, I can't hire an alarm and then go back to sleep unless I'm super tired. So I'd rather get the extra, you know, 10 minutes of sleep versus taking 10 minutes to get out of bed. Husband, on the other hand, is not like that. <laughs> All right, so let's throw our berries in. Oh my gosh, guys, this looks delicious. I think this will go over really well. Couple of folds. There we go. There's our batter. All right, here's our muffin tins. This should do roughly 24 muffins. You could always do mini muffins too in this. That would be good. All right, we had all of ours. Let's add the batter. We do have a little batter left for a couple more muffins. And then now, let's put our streusel on top. Now, if you don't want to make this streusel, you could also just top it with some extra, like, sanding sugar. That would be good as well. So I'm just going to kind of put one scoop right on top. It'll bake into it. I think lemon zest in the mix would have been good, too. All right, it's all set and ready to go. Now the recipe does call for 18 to 20 minutes. I'm gonna put it in for 12 minutes though, and then I'll check on because it's always good to do less than what the recipe calls for time-wise, just because everybody's oven's different and time frames could be different. You could like them different textures. So always do less than what the recipe calls for and you can add time if needed. So let's put this in for 12 minutes and then we'll check them. And then speaking of vanilla, one of you guys sent me some vanilla beans. Oh my gosh, you're so good to me. I've been wanting to make homemade vanilla forever, but the beans, they're quite pricey. And it comes with st some star anise, star anise. It says it's a sample. So I guess they send samples of their other spices, which I love star anise. This is really good. Add one of these in with your white rice while you're baking. Just one is enough seasoning to give it to the whole thing of rice and just take it out when you're done. Super good. But I am so excited about these. These are Madagascar Grade A Gourmet Vanilla Beans. Um, this is, I think it says two ounces. No, that's a lot, maybe not two ounces. I don't know, it doesn't say. This is from AfricanSpices.com. I do wanna get some good vodka for these high quality vanilla beans. And we have a distillery that's in Lolo that has its own vodka and they make a huckleberry vodka you think that would be good making a huckleberry vodka vanilla i think that would be really good but let me know in the comments below if that's what i should do or do you think i would be better just sticking with regular vodka or rum or whatever let me know what you like to use for your vanilla but i think a huckleberry vodka vanilla sounds pretty good and that might be fun to give as gifts too to have like kind of like the montana themed but let me know in the comments below and thank you so much this did not have a note so if you are the person who sent me this Thank you so much. It is so appreciative and you're so generous and 
Thank you, I'm super excited to give it a try. So expect a video later on for that. I ended up having these in there for 16 minutes and I think they look really good. They're starting to get the brown on around the edge of the muffin top. So I'm gonna let them sit in the pan for about two to three minutes. They will finish cooking in there and they will cool down and then we'll take them out and let them cool all the way. You guys, these smell delectable, divine, delicious, devouring, demonic. <laughs> what other D words do I know? Delicious, did I say delicious? Delectable, dandy. Oh, I probably could have baked them a little more. I don't, I worry about my muffins getting overcooked. Look at that. All right, let's take a bite. Wow. Wow. I definitely would have wish I would have added a little more lemon, maybe like if I had more lemon zest, I could have added that or maybe a drop of lemon extract to add a little lemonness to it. This is so good though. And it seems like that Greek yogurt kept it moist. Mm -mm -mm. Well, this is a great meal to start the day because we are going to be in grape heaven today. So I'm gonna get this all cleaned up. I'm gonna bake the rest of those, get husband out the door, get the kids up and running, and then as soon as they're settled, we'll get into grape mode. Okay, hey everybody, we are back with all the grapes. Now, one trick on making sure that your grapes stay fresher longer is to not wash them until you're ready to eat them. But I'm gonna be trying to preserve all these, so I'm just going to go ahead and wash them. <laughs> you know, like whenever you start a new job and they're like, well, here's what you're supposed to do. All right, now that we told you that, here's what we actually do. And most people just wash all their grapes at one time. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to get them all in the sink and we'll rinse them and wash them and pick them all off the vines at the same time. All right, here's our sink. Now, normally with a grape, let's see if I can find one. It has like this powder on it where if you rinse it off, so you just use water and rinse it. See how that white still stays on there? That's because that is the bloom and that requires a little more scrubbing to get off. That bloom is what helps keep the grape fresh for longer. So that's why you don't wanna wash these until you're ready to eat them. But once you wipe that bloom off, then they need to be refrigerated more and really kept clean. But this bloom, can be kind of bitter, that whiteness. So that's why you really want to rinse them off and give them a good cleaning. Mm -mm. All right, so I'm gonna clog my sink up, plug it up, cold water, and let's dump all these grapes in there. Wow, that is a lot of grapes. <laughs> sink full of grapes. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pick all these off the vines here and then we are going to add some baking soda. Baking soda helps release that bloom and get it nice and clean. Grapes are one of those things that usually have a lot of pesticides on them because animals love them and they wanna eat the sweetness of it. So they, grapes are usually covered in pesticides. I don't know about the organic ones, which these ones are organic, but I'm gonna do the same thing because it'll help take that bloom off and it'll give you super nice sparkly grapes. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll bring it back. All right, now that we have all of the them picked off, we're gonna add some baking soda. And this is really gonna help scrub the grapes and get that bloom off. So I kinda just do that, roll them between, I've never had to clean this many grapes at one time, but just roll them between your hands and that'll help scrub that bloom off and make your grapes nice and sparkly and taste really good. All right, so let's take the drain out and then we're going to rinse these. All right, let's get these rinsed off. I didn't really have too many bad ones in here. Well, now that I have a sink full of clean grapes, the question is, what am I gonna do with them? I do have my freeze dryer, so I think I'm gonna freeze dry a couple of them and see how that turns out. And then I'm going to make a I'm going to make a grape salad. I have an event to go to and I think that would sound super refreshing and it's kind of like a a fruit salad, you know, a um, what's that called? The Wardorf with the apples and the grapes. But this is gonna be strictly a grape salad. So that'll use up a couple of these. And I think I'm gonna try water bathing some and put them on my shelf for future use. 
So we are going to do that as well to try and preserve as many of these. And then I do have a few snacks that I want to give a try. Let's get these all laid out and let's get to processing. Okay, the first thing we are going to make are candied grapes, or these are also like frosted grapes, um, jello grapes, or Jolly Rancher grapes. They have all kinds of names, sour patch grapes. But you're just going to take any flavored jello. I happen to have a strawberry and lime here. That'd be good. Got a little bowl of water with a toothpick to get the grape wet. And then you're gonna roll it in the jello. And then drop it on the paper. That is so super uh, too much, okay. All right, and you're just gonna do that for all the grapes. All right, and now these are going in the freezer. All right, for the next one, I have some Greek yogurt here and some granola. So what I'm going to do is the same kind of thing. Dunk it in the vanilla yogurt and the granola. And there we go. And then we're going to freeze those. I'm going to try doing it without parchment paper. Grapes with vanilla yogurt is really good though. So I think this will make a really good snack. A nice frozen treat for those hot summer days too. All right, so I'm going to fill this up and then we'll throw it in the freezer. Next, I have my freeze-dry trays, which I think I'm just going to put the grapes whole on there and do one layer. Obviously, some of the big ones might take longer. I can't imagine sitting here and cutting all these in half, though. So I'm just going to try them whole, and we'll see how it turns out. Make sure I get all of the ends out. I might take the super big ones out. And it'll be fun to see how these freeze dry. All right, so let's get these in the freezer. All right, my next way to preserve these grapes is I'm going to try and water bath them. So what I have going on is just a clean quart jar with enough grapes to fill it to one inch. And then this is a simple syrup. This is a medium one, which is half water, half sugar. So I made seven cups of sugar to seven cups of water and I'm just going to water bath this and we're going to see how they hold up being water bathed. Some people do this and use it for juice so we will see how it turns out. Sweet grape juice. All right, and now we are going to debubble. So I'm just putting something rubber or plastic in here to kind of get all of the bubbles out and then if you need to add more of your liquid you can. I ran out of my sugar brine so I'm just going to add a little bit of water. It'll be fine. Now I'm going to take a splash of white vinegar put it on a paper towel and we are going to make sure that we wipe the rims really good. That sugar you want all that sugar up off of there so it will hold a really nice seal. And then you're going to put your lids on there for our canning lens. And then you're going to twist it fingertip tight. All right, and then we're going to get these in a boiling water bath. All right, now that I have the water bath here, it's going to come to a complete boil before I start a 20 minute timer. Let's see, it looks like I'm going to have enough water go over these probably a little too much water so when you're adding water remember your quarts that you're adding are going to be full of liquid as well so you're going to be pushing that water up so you may not need as much water as you thought you did for example it looks like I had about three quarts too much water which is okay I mean don't be too hard on yourself if you mess up just correct the problem there we go all right now I am using my pressure canner as a water bather. They have water bath canners which are a lot bigger and deeper so you don't have this problem. But I am just using my pressure cooker and I'm going to lock it just to help keep the water in there because it's going to be boiling. But we're not pressure cooking it or anything. So we're going to wait for that to come to a complete boil and once it's at a rolling boil then we will set a 20 minute timer. Turn it off, 
let it sit in the water for about five to 10 minutes and then we'll take them out of the water. And that's all you have to do to water bath grapes. All right, now, what else am I gonna be doing with all these grapes? Holy moly. Hey everybody, for the next grape recipe, peel some apples, which I already peeled some of those apples that I received from the food bank as well. I'm going to just chop them in chunks like so. We're gonna throw them in the Instant Pot with some grapes, and I'm gonna see if I can make some grape applesauce. I think that sounds kind of fun. So let's get in here and let's try and whip up some grape applesauce. All right, I have 11 apples in here. And then I'm gonna fill up to the max line with grapes. I'm gonna add one cup of water. And then I'm going to pressure cook this for eight minutes and then we'll see how it turns out. For my very last grape recipe, we're gonna be making a grape salad. So I'm gonna be using some room temperature cream cheese. This is actually the one third fat I got last week that I'm going to be able to use now. And then it's one cup of sour cream, but I'm going to use this yogurt. I feel like sour cream and yogurt is interchangeable. Uh, you can use a hand, you can use a hand mixer as well. Then we're gonna add two teaspoons of vanilla. All right, then I'm gonna add eight cups of grapes. It also suggests you use half red, half green grapes for more color, Oops, but you know I use what I got. Then we are going to sprinkle some brown sugar over this about three tablespoons worth. And then we're gonna sprinkle some pecans on there. And that is our grape salad. Let's give it a try. You are supposed to chill this before you serve it, but I'm gonna give it a try now. It's really good. I like grape with yogurt, so I thought this would be good. Add cream cheese to it. Mm -hmm. Pretty healthy, too. I like this. If you guys have an excess of grapes, I hope you give this a try. I can definitely see bringing this to a summer barbecue. I would even chop up some apples, put those in here. That would be good, too. Mm-hmm. Well, our applesauce is still working. And then we do still have to try the frozen grapes in the freezer. So let's go give those a try. Mm. All right, I went ahead and grabbed one of each frozen from the freezer to give a try. That was yogurt. Mmm. Frozen grape. The granola gets a little soft, which I'm not mad about. That's really good. Let's try the lime jello one. Mmm, that is really good. It was interesting. I was not expecting that crunch. I was not expecting that texture, the crunch. The jello was crunchy. I mean, I guess it makes sense, but ooh, that's really good with that burst of sour sweetness from the straight jello. Now, you can make a healthy treat by making that with sugar free jello. That would probably be a good snack for if you want low sugar. Man, I really like those treats. I wish I would have made more of the jello ones. So, the only thing we have left to do is to wait for this applesauce and then we'll blend it up and we'll see how it tastes. My Instant Pot is done. Natural release. Go ahead and give it a blend. And then we'll see if it needs any additional sugar. Definitely got a lot of um, water in there. We might have to reduce it some. Mm. Looks pretty good. Now what I'm gonna do, change this from keep warm to saute. 
and it's gonna go on let's do more so that'll be high and what that will do is start cooking this down and reducing it so it'll become a thick applesauce and then we'll give that a try so we'll let that go for a little bit morning everybody I ended up just putting the applesauce away and I figured I'd just try it here in the morning I had a long day so I kind of shut down at night you know if I get too exhausted but here's the great applesauce ended up getting pretty much exactly eight cups worth once it got reduced down I had to let it reduce for a while to get all that extra water out I probably didn't need an extra cup of water in there but I didn't want the instant pot burn notice you know so let's give it a try it tastes really good it's not overly grapey you tasted them mmm it's got a little I probably could use for a little sugar in there I didn't put any sugar it's got a little zing to it I don't think this is bad though wow who knew that you could turn grapes into applesauce so that's good to know you could even take this one step further and put it in your dehydrator and make fruit leather or fruit roll-ups that would be fun here are our canned grapes now I've never water bath grapes before, so some of you might be wondering what you're gonna use, what I'm gonna use these for. And I am also wondering what am I gonna use these for. But these are ones that, you know, when you have mixed cocktail, that's got grapes in it and stuff. So I think it'll work out just fine. I might be able to either get juice or just um, eat them as is. So I ended up with my seven quarts of that, my applesauce, and then I do that, I'm still eating on that grape salad. It is so good. And then um, I do still have a container of just plain grapes for the kids to eat. So I actually utilized every single grape from that bunch. That is so exciting. I'm ecstatic to be able to not only try something new, but be able to feed my family good, healthy food, something that I got to try. I'm super thankful to the food bank. I hope you guys consider going to the food bank. If you're needing food or if you're struggling, please don't be ashamed about it. Just go to the food bank. That's what it is there for. Thanks for hanging out with me this week, seeing what I got at the food bank and how I utilized it. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time on Mama Birds. Add it to the muffin mix, the muffin mix, the muffin mix. And a nice sugar to the muffin mix to sweeten up the batter.